this cheap little scope just isn't cutting it. I know you guys have been telling me that since I got it. The um, And yeah, I agree. It sort of does the job. You can kind of see it. It's got a dim little screen though. The controls are a pain in the ass. Um, it's not... I mean, it's, it's good for some stuff. If you're working in audio range, it's probably adequate. But it was time. And I've been... I've been watching the uh, the Kijiji, which is uh, similar to Craigslist, only it's more popular around here. And I finally found a guy that was selling a scope and managed to talk him down to a reasonable price. And so I got this. It is a Tektronix 2465 300 megahertz bandwidth four channel oscilloscope in good working condition I might add. So that's what we're doing today. I am going to explore this guy a little bit and I'm going to scope all the things if I can. So first off it's not going to fit on my bench obviously. So I've it's not going to fit over there or back there. I know a lot of guys put it up on a shelf behind their bench but I got a wall there. So I've ended up putting it just over here which is uh you look a little bit further to the right there's my computer down there so i think that'll be fairly convenient i can i can reach the controls easily from from my normal sitting position i can see it and uh yeah so i'm hoping that's going to work out pretty well so in order to show this the uh, scope to you better, I've got my camera on a fancy little mount here. Um, you don't need anything fancy to do YouTube. It's a selfie stick tie wrapped onto a C-clamp. And there's my main camera that I normally use. And it can rotate and stuff around here. Here's the normal view where it's normally looking from. Um, so I can spin it around to show the scope and I can also show where I've got my wife's old phone mounted here which is just another selfie stick on an L bracket mounted to this post. The post of course is holding out the model railroad. Um, so we can get a good view of the scope like this and I should power it on and let it warm up because it is a CRT. That's um, or I can also zoom this guy in. So there is the scope. Let's connect its probe to the self-test. Uh, self Are we focused? I think we're focused. Yep, that's reasonably focused. Let's just go through what we've got on here for controls. So we've got two channels, uh, two standard channels um, with the usual features, adjustable volts, uh, AC coupled input, um, adjustable voltage scale, um, vertical position for each of the first two channels. Um, and turn on channel one, two, three, and four. I mean, invert the second channel against the first one if you're measuring, if you're looking for uh, phase cancellation or something like that. Uh, I'm not quite sure what other reasons you'd use that for. I'm sure that'll come up eventually. Horizontal position adjustment. All fairly standard stuff. Nothing weird here. A bunch of different triggering options. Um, triggering source. Uh, let me see. Yeah, let me just scooch over a little bit here. There we go. So, triggering source, um, triggering modes, triggering levels and stuff. Then you've got the third and fourth channels, which are not quite as versatile as the first two, but you can still uh, you can select a couple of different voltage ranges. Plus, of course, you can use the one or ten times on the probes, I guess. And you can adjust those to different vertical positions as well if you turn them on. So I don't know how much use I'm actually going to get out of those. But uh, I'll definitely be using the first two. And I think I'm going to grab the probe off the cheesy old scope and add it in here as well. 
so that I can get two different things on the screen at once. Um, I'll turn channel two on and change its time base. Oh, right, I need to trigger off channel two, don't I? I want that to look in there. There we go. So there is the PWM off uh, Simple Electronics circuit here. So now if I go onto that and adjust the PWM, you can see it happening. Cool. Um, one thing, this being an analog scope, doesn't do a lot of the uh, of the analytics type stuff. Um, it doesn't give you frequency and duty cycle and all the rest of that stuff on screen. But that's not a huge hardship, really. Some basic math. Uh, we can do the voltage. It's got delta voltage markers here. Um, where are they? You can see that little dotted line down there. So I just set it for the bottom. Set the other one for the top. And we can tell we got 4.3 volts peak to peak. That's pretty easy. And then there's also a delta time. So we can set, you can see that marker at the, uh, at the bottom of there. And you can go one cycle later. And you get 1026 microseconds. And then you can just do some quick math on that. Um, point oh oh one oh two six oh crap that's not it um oh yeah one over nine hundred and seventy six hertz which is very close to what what I remember this thing was doing nine hundred and ninety three that's pretty close if I was to zoom out a little bit on the scope I could probably get uh in fact, let's just do that. There we go. And we'll move our time to there and to there. So that's all. That's a little bit different, but uh, you zoomed in a little bit better and it's pretty easy to see. So that's cool. So you don't really need those fancy, uh, the fancy readouts. I mean, sure, it always helps, but... Uh, it's not a hardship to have to do it this way. And of course for duty cycle, you can just move the position around. And uh, so we got uh, two thirds, right? Uh, pretty much there. I can go to 50% if I want to, which is pretty close to that. This is what we did for decades before there were digital scopes um, that would do all the thinking for you. Or we could just go, uh, where, what am I on here? I'm on one volt for division. So one, two, three, right? You can just count it up, um, change your position so that you're on a convenient line. So we're one, two, three, four, and a bit which is, I think, what we got on the delta voltage before, 4.3, yeah. So you don't need all that fanciness to get uh, to get reasonable levels of precision. I mean, this isn't rocket surgery, right? Okay, let's see, uh, let's put some other things under the scope. Okay, here we've got this uh, little function generator, uh, 8038 based, uh, so it can put out uh, triangle waves, square waves, and sine waves makes it a handy little thing now when i first put this thing together or did i put this in together or did i um did i buy this pre-assembled i can't remember i think i put this together as a kid i, I honestly can't remember uh anyway um i remember the the cheap crappy scope was showing me weird things with the sine waves so we'll just check so I've got uh, channel one set to, uh, or sorry, channel two, uh, my my cheap probe, set to square waves, and channel one, which is the probe that came with the thing, set to the sine wave. So let's turn on channel one, and wow, 
That doesn't look like any kind of a sine wave that I've ever seen before. Um, let's adjust the duty cycle and they both should change because it's going to affect both of them. It's about 50%. There's the distortion pot on here. I'll adjust that through its full range. Not much happening there, is there? Uh, okay. And of course I can adjust the frequency up and down within its range. Which you can see that I can uh, put the, er, align the two traces to each other. So the uh, there is a little bit of a phase shift between the two of them as well. The... Uh, where it goes from the from the low or when it transitions right from the uh, lowest voltage up so that's uh that's interesting to note but also yeah that uh that sine wave is horrendous let's try the triangle wave that doesn't look much better we'll see if the distortion changes that yeah the distortion affects that a little bit but I'm not terribly impressed with this unit actually. I was hoping. Let's let's see what the duty cycle does. Nah. So I wouldn't want to use this for uh, testing audio equipment. Uh, this uh, this little signal generator. Um, I was hoping it would be better than that. But now I know that I've got a scope that I can trust. I know that uh, that is in fact a bad sine wave rather than wondering if my my little cheap scope was lying to me let's get a different signal generator one that i actually did build from a kit and that would be this one here this one is based on a 555 so it's square wave output uh you can use the basically you can use these jumpers to send it to the output or you can just grab the output there and let's pick up a a triangle there that looks pretty darn good um see does this part adjust the frequency what does this part adjust i can't remember this part doesn't seem to adjust anything okay fair enough doesn't matter uh there is the sine wave though let's stretch this out a little bit and adjust the voltage i'll leave the square wave down there we'll adjust the voltage that's a little bit fuzzy but uh that's a pretty respectable sine wave and does that pot do anything to the sine wave not really okay so as cheap and crappy as this thing is that's not bad and if we position these there's a little bit of a phase shift going on but uh which is caused by the rc filters that uh knock the uh the high frequency harmonics out of the square wave to give us the sine wave and at each stage so there is after the first filter whoa which is a uh a sawtooth maybe that's the one that the pot uh, just no that doesn't do it either Anyway, so that's after the first filtering. It's a sawtooth, kind of. Then there's the triangle wave, which is getting a little softer at the edges and looking almost sinish. Then there's the actual sine wave after the third filtering stage. So that's pretty cool. This is turning into more of a... Let's look at the uh, circuits that I've got around here that can generate a signal. I realize I haven't tried anything really high frequency yet, so let's take a look at the 16 meg crystal on this Arduino. Because a 300 meg bandwidth scope ought to be able to see that, shouldn't it? So there's ground, and let's pick off one side of the crystal. Okay, so just the time base a little bit. Here we go, We're starting to get some sine waves. That's pretty nice. Let's uh, move this around a little bit. So we got just a couple on there and let's do the time thing. So go from kind of the peak of that one to the P 
peak of that one. 62 point, what is it? 62.6 nanoseconds? Nanoseconds, wow. Okay, so point zero 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 six two one over. That's pretty close to sixteen meg, isn't it? Um, close enough for uh, for approximation, anyway. If you wanted to get any closer, you could uh, use a frequency counter, I suppose. But that's pretty damn close. What should it be? Sixteen, three, four, five, six. Um, one over that, so it should be 62 nanoseconds exactly. Once we get 62.64, let's see what ha let's see what that actually. Oh, right, I need that back on there again. That's pretty close within the margin of error, anyway, and certainly close enough for hobby use. I'm definitely closer than this thing. It wouldn't even go that high, I'm sure. I think it only goes up to about 10 megs or something like that. Because at its heart, it is actually an Arduino. That's, uh, if you dive down deep enough into there, you will find an 18 mega 328 powering this thing. Which means that Nyquist theorem, blah, 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 it's not going to be able to sample any higher than, uh, half of the sampling frequency if the sampling frequency is the crystal frequency which it isn't but just go with me here if it is then this thing can't sample any higher than eight uh meg and probably realistically with processor doing everything else probably closer to five and again that's fine for audio work and for any time you need to get sort of close-ish and for you know, a cheap scope that you can afford to have damaged in the field, nothing wrong with that, but it is what it is. So the, the other cool thing you can do, which is not technical at all, but it's kind of fun. And several other people have done this recently. So I'm, uh, I'm not, this isn't anything unique, but I'm just going to connect the audio output from my computer to the X and Y channels, or one and two channels, and then have my scope in XY mode, and press play on this particular thing on YouTube, and we get uh, some scope music. Now, if I've done this with editing correctly, I'm gonna add in the audio and hope that I don't get copyright struck. But basically, the left and right channels are are doing uh, various things of the lesson right channels the audio are doing various things um, and the tones that are on there are interacting and doing this which is pretty damn cool if you want more of an explanation of how this works smarter every day did a video on it not that long ago and techmoan did a video quite some time ago and i'll put a link to his video because I think everybody's seen the Smarter Every Day one but uh, TechMongo takes it in a slightly different direction and explains it a little better but I thought this was pretty cool I mean, why wouldn't you like this so yeah this wasn't uh, this wasn't intended to be a super serious video um, mostly just me playing around with my uh, with my new toy and by new I mean it's it's 80s technology um, there's nothing, uh, nothing new about it, but it's new to me. I got a good deal on it actually. Um, cause if you've been watching my channel enough, you know that I don't like to spend a lot of money on things. I try and go as cheap as I can. And I think I got a pretty good deal on this. It's cheaper than what anybody's selling them for on eBay. It's so much better than this thing. The... Like I said, I don't want to discourage you from, if you don't have any money and you need a scope for low frequency stuff, this will do the job. Just don't expect it to, uh, to be super duper quality. Um, and it gets you there. It, it, uh, it got me where I needed to be for a couple of years here in my basement. Um, but 
I'm happy to have something like that, which is more like what I used to work with back when I did component level repair like 25 years ago or thereabouts. Hope you uh, found this at least a little bit amusing. Um, I was amusing myself. That's the whole point of the exercise. Thanks for watching. Um, comments, questions, as usual, down there. I will talk to you later.